Welcome to week six, everyone. What's our theme for this week, Joseph? Geospatial data. Wait, haven't we been working with data during this entire course? True, we have local data. Hey, everyone, remember the litter mapping activity? Regional, remember the contour line data for Zion National Park? National, remember the motor vehicle crashes? And global, remember the HDI or the Human Development Index analysis you did by country. But this week, we will focus on the types of data available to you in a GIS environment and the means, portals, libraries, hub sites, by which you can access that data. We will also discuss strategies for finding that data. Right. So you don't spend all your time searching for data, but rather spending most of your time mapping, analyzing, and making decisions. Mm-hmm. Another type of data we will spend some time on this week in particular is imagery data. Imagery data. Single band, multi-band, UAV or drone data at many different resolutions and covering many different themes. Oh, yes, remote sensing. Looking at the world from aircraft, drones or satellites. It's a rapidly growing segment of GIS and mapping. In our Explorer hands-on session this week, you will dig into this type of data and so much more. You will use tools such as the Sentinel-2 land cover app, the Landsat Explorer app, and assess lava flows in Hawaii using imagery and 2D and 3D maps in GIS. Remember the distinction between apps and maps. This week, you will use the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer where you get the full interface, the map in the center, the tools on the left and the right that you've seen that allow you to change the base map, add data, measure area and perimeter, do spatial analysis, change the symbology and classification method, and much more. Then there are apps, web mapping applications, which you can create from the map, which allow your end users to do the things that you have included in your app using the tools that you have included and the data that you have specified. Your end users in the app do not get the full interface, but rather what you, the map creator, have designed. The Sentinel-2 and the Landsat Explorer tools that you will use this week are examples of apps. More about apps next week as well. Plus, the focus this week on remotely sensed imagery is intentional. These images often allow us to see things on, over, and even under the surface of the Earth that we cannot see with our own eyes. Things like healthy vegetation versus beetle-infested vegetation, or type of rock underground, or current precipitation. It is amazing, especially when you think about those first pigeons around 1890 taking aerial photos with tiny cameras. Wait, you didn't just say pigeons, did you? Yes, pigeons. Smart ones. I don't want to give it all away. Go to week six and find out. From there, we will talk about the development of aerial photography beginning in the 1920s, satellite imagery in the 1990s, small satellites in the 2000s, LIDAR imagery in the 2010s, and drone imagery in the 2020s. The field has advanced so rapidly in a short amount of time. What's driving the innovation forward? This is important. People need the data to make wise decisions about the Earth. Many variables on our planet are heading in the wrong direction, ocean acidity, land temperature, diversity and number of plant and animal species, water pollution. So with these data sets combined with GIS tools and the people working with them, we can work to reverse some of these trends and variables about the Earth. So true. Empowered with these data sets, tools, and your spatially thinking brain, all of you taking this course can make a positive difference. And as always, remember to think about What's the most important thing you have learned this week? And we'll see you in the course.